안녕하십니까? Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim y o n g w o n of Online Surgery. Let's look at surgical clip and review the case. The patient of the day is a 36-year-old male patient. If you look over here, this is an initial visit. The oral condition was not very good, and you can see multiple root rests with an oral cavity. The patient had a lot of fear of dental clinics. The patient recalls that anesthesia was not done properly and therefore the patient had a lot of fear against the pain and had delayed treatment but the patient was about to get married and he could not delay dental treatment anymore. Oral order and multiple reasons led him to the dental clinic. The treatment plan First, overall scaling and oral care was to be done. Root rest in number 16, 14, 28, 37, and 46 need to be removed. In the case of number 14, there is periapical lesion. I suspect a significant alveolar bone destruction. Implants will be placed in number 14, 16, 24, and 26. I originally planned to place in numbers 27 as well, but because of various reasons, including economic condition as well, as well as fear of dental treatment, the patient didn't want implants to be placed in number 27 and 37 in the upper. The implant was to be placed up to number 26, and the lower up to number 36. And on the right side, implants were to be placed in number 46 and 47. As mentioned, the patient had significant fear against dental treatment. When I originally planned one guide, I suggested placing all implants at once, but patient had significant fear. As a result, we decided to go with the upper and lower on the right side first. In the case of number 14 and 16, I suspected necessity of GBR there. In the case of number 14, root register was extracted. After extraction on the buccal side, there is a little bit of fistula. This was observed after extraction, and when I removed it, you can see that fistula is connected to the alveolar bone granulation tissue was removed. Apex side of number 14, the alveolar destruction was quite severe. After extraction, this is the panoramic image. Scaling as well as overall oral care was done. As mentioned, in the upper and lower of the right side, number 14, 16, 46, 47, one guide is going to be used to place the implant. In number 14 and 16, where alveolar bone defect exists, GBR will be done for number 16, and there is no bone on the distal side. Because of fistula in number 14, on the apex side, if I place implant here, below the implant, there will be fenestration defect. And on number 16, on the distal side, there's a lot of alveolar bone destruction on the distal side and it requires bone augmentation. On CT, if you look at number 14 on the apex side, there's slight amount of bone on the superior side, but below that, there's no bone. Therefore, after implant placement, I anticipated use of bone augmentation, especially bovine bone. If you look at number 16, it's okay here, but on the distal side, there's a lot of alveolar bone destruction. This is one guide report. As mentioned, the original plan was to do implant placement in the upper and lower at the same time. On the report, number 14 TS3 4.0 by 13 millimeter was planned. I'm going to show you in the surgical video, but I was not able to get the satisfactory primary stability using this. Therefore, 4.5 diameter implant was placed freehand. Only 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant was prepared. Therefore, this was used to get primary stability and GBR was done.
그리고 In the case of number 16, KS3 5.0 by 10 mm implant was planned. On the distal side, where bone is destroyed, GBR was planned. In number 46, KS3 5.0 by 10 mm, number 47 5.0 by 8.5 mm was planned. Four implants were to be placed in the upper and lower in the case of number 14. Bone graft was to be done on the buccal defect as well as the extraction socket. And for number 16, on the distal side, a GBR was to be done in the area where alveolar bone is lost. This is immediate peristop image. Panoramic image, in the case of lower, initial stability, primary stability was good, healing abutment was connected, and in the case of upper, cover screw was connected. After bone graft, primary closure was done. As shown, in the case of number 14, implant was placed and on the buccal side, on the defect area, such as the apex side, AOS was used. This is his immediate post-op. In the case of number 16, on the distal side, GBR was done. Number 46. Number 47. One guide was used to place the implant in the planned area. You can see that on the CT. Let's look at the surgical clip. Number 14 and 16. Implants will be placed and GBR will be done. Palatal incision is made. Minor flap is reflected so that the drill can go in. One guide template will be adapted and surgery will be conducted. I am checking the adaptation. Amount the amount the drill hole can be formed. Path drill has been used to prevent a drill from slipping in number 14. After that, depth gauge is used to check because extraction socket is wide and bone quality was not good. I used initial drill for soft bone like 2.2 twist drill. Final drill is the same. It's the same as placing 3.5 diameter implant. 2.2 by 13 millimeter twisted drill is used. Implants are being placed. As of placing 3.5, 4.0 has been placed. As I did drilling, I could really feel that the stability would not be good. After placing number 16, this will be adjusted once again. With a torque wrench, you can see that primary stability is barely secured. After removing template, I'm going to remove the implant and check once again. Initial drilling is done in number 16. The bone quality is much better here. 3.5 by 10 millimeter one guided drill is used for drilling. Pumping action is done to prevent heat generation. 5.0 by 10 millimeter one guide drilling is done. One guide drill is used. KS3BA 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant is used. It is irrigated with saline water. I'm placing it approximately 80% with engine. Hand wrench is used to get the final position. In number 16, primary stability is satisfactory. The stent is removed. As for number 14, primary stability was not satisfactory, therefore implant was removed. I decided to change to diameter 4.5, but only 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant was available, so I placed it freehand. I placed the implant more palatally. Primary stability is about 10 newton centimeter. Pre-mount is used and it is removed. Yeah. 
ISQ value. On one side, it is 55 and 74. The distal one, it is about 66 and 66. GBR will be performed after a reflecting flap. I'm going to check the fenestration defect on the buckle side. After connecting cover screw, AOS is going to be used, which is a bovine bone. This is used on fenestration defect and extraction socket in number 16. On the distal area where bone is lacking, GBR is done, OS guide is trimmed. It is applied on the palatal side of number 14. Membrane is used in number 16. OS guide is used. On the area of GBR, collagen membrane is applied and primary closure is done. When you do anchor suture using the mesial tooth, you can get good closure of the flap. You can reposition the flap like this. In number 16, suture is done. I completed surgery on the upper first. The one guide template is adapted in the lower. GBR was done in the upper. I did not do tissue punch in the lower and I am making minor incision to do one guide surgery. Flap is not fully reflected. I am slightly reflecting it so that drilling is possible. One guide is adapted. Initial drilling is done. 3.5 by 10 millimeter one guide drilling is done. More so than thought, the bone feels harder. Therefore, I did 4.5 by 10 millimeter drilling once again. The bone quality in the upper was not very good. I did full length drilling with 4.5, 5.0. I did not do full length of drilling. I am now placing the implant. KS3BA 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant is used. The bone was harder than expected, therefore, the implant did not really go in. I decided to do more preparation. For now, the implant is being removed. If implant cannot be removed on one guide template, at times you can remove the template first and then remove the implant. If the bone is hard as is now, one to two taper drill, you can use 5.5 drilling, but one guide drill does not have 5.5 drill, but there is cortical drill. This can be used for such purposes. In the superior part, I am using the cortical drill to remove cortical bone. 5.0 by 10 millimeter one guide drill is used a full length sufficiently. And now I'm attempting to place the implant once again. New implant is used to be a 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant is placed approximately 80% using engine. It's going in much easier than before. The stability seems to be better than expected. Over 30 newtons, implant has been placed nicely. Final depth is adjusted. The initial drill in number 47 is being done. Five point zero by eight point five one guide drill is used. Drilling is done full length. Five 
case 3 ba 5.0 by 8.5 implant is placed. I am placing it approximately 80% with engine. And then I'm using hand wrench to get the final position. Stability is over 30 newton centimeters. ISQ has been measured in the case of number 46, it was about 73, and as for number 47, stability was good, it was about 81. Because primary stability was good, I connected healing abutment, and I did not do any GBR and did suture. When you use one guide kit for surgery, at times, the tactile sense you get when you do drilling, it's quite tough to really sense the quality of bone. When you use one guide, of course, you take CT before surgery and anticipate bone quality, but in reality, it may be different clinically. If the bone quality is very bad or harder, Compared to what was anticipated, you can use cortical drill to do wider preparation and then place the implant to get better result. Thank you for watching.